Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really sorry for the absence of videos over the last, well, it's getting on for probably 12 months now. Um, but I'm back with a few new ideas. Um, but basically, I've been rummaging around in my collection to have a look at books that I, that I own, I should say. Um, and I've come out with this book to start off. I'm going to do some videos basically uh, with recipes from various different levels, from simple cakes to mission star books like this one. And this book is by Glyn Purnell. He's a chef from Birmingham, uh, one Michelin star. I had the opportunity to go to his restaurant back in 2014, uh, around actually the same time this book was published. Uh, there I am with a cup of tea, just flicking through the book. And it, honestly, it's such a good read. There's some hilarious stories in here and obviously some great recipes. The recipes in here, they're kind of on the wild side, but that kind of makes it unique for me. And that's what really drew me to the book. Um, as well as obviously having dinner at Glynn's restaurant in Birmingham. As you can see, haddock and cornflakes is kind of a weird combination, but it got Glynn a Michelin star somehow. Also, these uh, cheese and pineapple sticks, reminiscent of kids' parties when I was growing up, have been elevated to fine dining level. So the idea I had was that I'd go with three dishes, do three courses, and that would be for the cheapest price I could get it for. Now I did consider the monkfish masala uh, that was in the previous picture. However, I went with the starter option of mackerel and potato pakoras, simply because they seem to be quite simple, uh, easy to prepare. And to be honest, I didn't want too much fuss at the beginning of the cook. I thought if it was gonna get harder, I'd rather it get harder towards the middle or towards the end. And I had to kind of use my imagination with the main course. Um, the brill with toffee and cumin carrots stood out Unfortunately, there was no picture, so I had to kind of freestyle uh, the plating on that one, as you'll see later on. For the dessert section, it was kind of it was kind of a mission really to choose just one dessert because they all look fantastic. Like this pavel over here almost made it in, uh, as did this lemon posset with tamarillo jam. Tamarillos aren't very common where I live, so I kind of ruled that out. But I went for something that sounded quite interesting and different: the marjoram scented creme caramel. Kind of strange because I don't really like creme caramel. Um, I'm not sure even now why I picked it, but I think because I knew I could replace marjoram with oregano that I have growing in the garden, and it looked quite a simple dessert. So I wanted a relaxed cook. I didn't want too much stress, and obviously for the ease of filming, because I've not filmed for God knows how long. So as you can see, I didn't need that many ingredients, and the total cost of everything was 19 pounds, which is a bargain. In the pestle and mortar here, I've got a few spices that would make up the Purnell's Garam Masala, uh, or Purnell's uh, Masala Spice Mix, I believe it is. And this would go on to the pakoras, um, both in the mix and at the end. Here I've got a mix of uh, rock salts, ground ginger, cumin seeds, uh, a few other bits and pieces. And this would go on to the mackerel to effectively cure it, give it a lot of flavor um, before adding to the pakora batter. Um, as you can see here, I didn't take the pin bones out of the mackerel. Um, I realized I could kind of do that later, so it wasn't much of a problem. And it was just a simple case of shaking the salt all over it to cover it completely, leaving it for five minutes to extract the moisture, to give it some flavor. And by that point, it'd be ready to mix in with the batter ingredients. So just before I diced up the mackerel, I had to wash it off, pin bone it. And as you can see, I kind of went down the center line with a knife uh, just to take the bones out in one fell swoop. That's one way of doing it. I'm sure other people have got other ways of doing it, but that was really effective. So I'd made up the batter mix with lemon juice, gram of flour, a few spices, and of course some chopped chili and coriander went in along with the mackerel and some parboiled potatoes that had just gone soft. Uh, nothing too fancy, just diced up and easily uh, cooked for about five minutes or so until the knife goes through them. Um, you can see here my balancing of the camera and trying to stir at the same time created like a whirlwind motion with the bowl. Um, but yeah, it did the job and everything got mixed up, ready to pop into the oil. One kind of criticism I did have of Glyn was that he didn't give me an oil temperature, so I went for 180 degrees Celsius that I'd normally fry onion bhajis and things like that in. And as you can see, they go nice and golden and crispy. 
in around about two to four minutes. So once the pakoras had finished in the oil and they were nice and crispy and golden, all that was left was to put them on kitchen paper just to drain off the excess grease. Now I mentioned that I was holding back a little bit of a spice mix and that was just to scatter over the top just for a bit more flavour. And then they're just simply served with a mint yogurt, nice and easy. This is like simple cooking really, um, but the key is to get fresh mackerel. That'll make all the difference. And as you can see from my notes in just a moment's time, um, there we go. The flavour, absolutely fresh as you can get with the mackerel. Crunch is fantastic, easy to prepare. I would have liked a bit more acidity from the lemon juice. It's a solid eight out of 10. So moving on to the main course, uh, this was a carrot julienne or thinly sliced carrots uh, in a vinaigrette which was made of balsamic vinegar and olive oil. Uh, this would be like a crunchy salad to sit on top of the fish when it had been cooked. And the way that the fish was going to be cooked was in a spiced coconut milk uh, sort of mixture here. You can see with curry powder, a bit of uh, ground ginger and some thyme leaves. Um, it's kind of a way that I've not really cooked fish before, just poaching it in uh, effectively co coconut milk or milk. Um, and the fish, I had to jump from brill to halibut because brill sadly wasn't available at the time. But halibut is a fantastic fish and will do exactly the same job, just poaching away nicely. Um, it's a great way to cook this kind of fish. So while the fish was cooking, around sort of five to six minutes, I had to get on with the caramel for the sauce. Um, this sauce was kind of a strange sauce because it was literally a caramel with carrots and passion fruit. Uh, something I've never come across before and I doubt I'll ever come across again for a main course. Um, but weirdly, the passion fruit gave it a really nice acidity and the sweetness, of course, of the caramel uh, made sure that um, the sauce had nice balance to it. Um, as you can see here on the plating, it's kind of simple. Like I said before, I have to kind of freestyle it because there's no picture to refer back to. Um, but yeah, I think I did all right. So poaching fish in milk is actually fantastic. I'm a big fan of it, big convert to it as well. Uh, as you can see, the flakes of the fish were fantastic. It was so juicy. The sauce actually went really well with the fish. Um, the only thing that I would say is that the passion fruit seeds I would leave out next time. Otherwise, it's a really, really good dish. And seven out of 10 compared to the last course, I think is probably a fair score. So I wanted dessert and I had to hunt around for some shallow ramekins and the only things I could come up with were these tapas dishes that I bought in Spain about 10 years ago now, I think. Um, I think they're from Valencia actually. Uh, I got uh, a milk mixture with eggs, uh, sugar and oregano in there instead of marjoram. It's the same sort of family. I had it growing in the garden and it was more for convenience than anything else. Um, here's where I kind of started to go wrong a little bit in the dessert. I didn't take my caramel to anywhere near dark enough. I'm not too sure why I did this, but I did it. There was no way going back after that really. Um, as you can see, I had to swirl it to uh, completely cover the base of the ramekin and then leave it to set. Now this was mistake number two. I only let it set for about three or four minutes. You're supposed to let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes. So as you can see there, as I pour the cream in, the caramel kind of creates almost like a vacuum in the middle. Uh, it didn't affect the final result too much, but I definitely wouldn't do it again. So the custards took about 40 minutes or so to cook until they reached this wobbly stage and then they go in the fridge overnight. Um, it was quite an easy dessert really up to now, apart from obviously the disastrous caramel. This is just a simple crushed blackberries uh, with a bit of icing sugar and lemon juice. The lemon juice that I should have put on the pakora is thinking about it now. But um, to plate up this dessert is so simple. You can do it last minute, you can do it hot or cold, it's entirely up to you. Um, the easiest way I found to get the creme caramels out of the molds was just to run a knife around the edge, um, which just releases it, and then kind of like tap the top or use magic, and hey presto, there it is. My blonde caramel that isn't a caramel that kind of tasted like caramel, as you'll see in a bit.
Okay, so dodgy caramels aside, this was absolutely delicious and I'm converted now to creme caramel. I've been missing out all these years. I've not made it properly, but I have now, so I was really happy with it. The oregano flavor was just fantastic and it was so unique and a really good twist on the traditional creme caramel. An absolute winner with a nine out of 10 score. So it's really good to be back doing these videos again. I have really missed it. So if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Also, you can subscribe for future videos and drop me a comment if you want a particular recipe or book covering. I'll see if it's in my collection and then maybe it'll end up on the channel. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.